not your average tabletop. Woohoo! Welcome to Not Your Average Tabletop. I'm Zach. And I'm Pepper. And today we are reacting to the latest Stonemeyer Games news, which is mainly the biggest headline, probably, is a new game, their final game of the year, I believe, that's being released. And that is Stamp Swap, uh, which I think I... So, I know what the championship shirt for this year looks like. I don't... Is that sold it yet or whatever we haven't received it yet but based on what that was i was pretty confident that the game was going to be related to stamps mm -hmm. because yeah. the layout of the shirt had like the stonemire games in like stamp format mm -hmm. and i was like hmm uh yeah. I, that has to mean something because i mean it could just be a choice artistic choice could but it, it seemed like it was like trying not to be too obvious not trying too, too obvious but yeah, it's still too distinct of a choice to be meaningless. Um, right. But yeah, just exactly. remembering at this moment, coming back to me that you had predicted that, had told me that, uh, that you noticed that. And so I was still shocked by the theme because I had completely forgotten you had said that. I'd just not even wow. paid any attention to well, your Well, you figured prediction. I was wrong. I've never been correct on any oh, prediction. It's anything but a snap theme game is what <laughs> I was thinking. But yeah, I but doubt the, that's what you're thinking. The theme initially... I'm just like, it's we're just too attached to that old Stone Meyer feel of games of just classic viticulture side. There's just something about that vibe uh, that they have, and I'm just immediately like, oh, here's another game that just doesn't feel like a Stone Meyer themed game. It is my initial reaction with um, kind of theme and look. Uh, but as I've looked at the cover more that you can see here. Um, actually, a little bigger. We have its official page here. Um, I do really like the cover. Uh, I think it looks really nice. Um, I like how they kind of worked the logo in the center here with mm -hmm. Stonemeyer Games on there as well with uh, artist and designer. It's very much in the center and in your face, but it's not distracting. No. Um, and obviously, all the pictures around it uh, very busy, but it works. Yeah, I thought this was a pretty good cover uh, for what is going on there. Like you said, very busy, but still looks clean in a way. Um, and yeah, I I guess for some reason, I think it looks somewhat like trekking through history for some reason. or That's what it kind of reminds me of a little it bit. It feels like why. one of those games. I don't know <laughs> if just the art style or um, I don't know what it is. It reminded me of that one as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I... I'm somewhat excited about the theme. It's interesting, a collecting yeah. theme, because uh, I would say that even though I do like board games to play them, I think I would have to say I've become a bit of a collector. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't, uh, <laughs> because I definitely do have games on my shelf that I'm like, when I think, of, oh, should I play that game? I'm like, ah, it'd be too much. But at the same time, I never am like, ah, it's too much, and I should just get rid of it. It's like, yeah. ah, but I like having that to round out the collection. I mean, you uh, need so. it. What if someone comes in and says, I want to play 200 games? Exactly. Uh, a good variety. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, I. it did seem like, uh, as I was learning about it, uh, it did kind of seem like a little bit different than some of those classic ones that we really like. But yeah. at the same time... <laughs> kind of seems stone Mary. I think in the live chat, the designer was in there who, uh, this person actually designed Honey Buzz and helped with Genotype as well. Honey Buzz is a game we have played and both really enjoy. So I think that's a good sign. Uh, but I think he had mentioned that he originally it was not planned to necessarily be published by Stone Mary Games. So I could definitely see it being, this one does feel like it could be, it could have been published by, I don't know, there's just a couple other companies that I, I don't know. I don't know which ones I think of, but yeah. there's like some companies that it's like, oh, you know, it's kind of that lighter weight kind of game. Yeah. Um, or comes across as lighter weight. I have not played it, obviously. Uh, and yeah, Stormare has some of those. Uh, and I think Jamie compared it in weight to Between Two Castle, Mad King Ludwig, which Jamie has never called it this, but I have called it a kind of almost party game. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the feel that this one's going to give. Uh, <laughs> 
it is not it's not a party game, but that's just my that's just the way I feel about it personally. Yeah, I'm playing it. it. Yeah, it fits. It's a party game compared to our usual games. Uh, maybe not to the general public, but right. Yeah, I wouldn't say like yeah, the general public. If I'm if they're like, oh, what's the great? You know, they learn I like throw games. They're like, oh, what's a great party game? Probably would not be the one. That say, <laughs> oh, go get that. That's a great party game. Uh, I don't think that's quite what they mean, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. That based on that designer, that got me a little excited because I'm like. Oh, I thought this, you know, maybe seemed a little simple and kind of seemed maybe like some other games a little bit. This one, uh, I know in the comments, some people had talked about Penny Black or something, which is oh. one I haven't played. It's about it's got a stamp theme as well. Yeah. Uh, but this made me think of the, the one. I don't know why I thought of it, but uh, Fit to Print. Uh, I played that one and that is what I thought of. And I'm so I'm like, oh, this has got a lot to live up to because Fit to Print, I went into it with no expectations. And kind of loved it in a way. I, I, I've been like waiting to see it sometime on a sale because I'm like, I think I would actually probably just pull the trigger and buy that one. And that would have never been what I thought when I first went into the game. Oh, wow. uh, whereas this one, not sure. We'll see if it can capture that. But now being from Stonemaier Games, being from the person that designed Honey Buzz, I think there's just more expectations on it, which could in a way hurt it for me, I think. Mm, yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah, I would say we had about the same exact reaction because I was also like, oh, Honey Buzz Designer. I like that a lot. That gets some trust in there, other than obviously Stonemeyer is just going to put out a good game. Um, but that's a little more interest. And Fit to Print is what I thought of when I thought of the gameplay with putting these. Uh, not really polyomino, and I don't think it's polyomino in uh, Fit to Print either. It's just rectangular no. square shapes. And right, that's why it made me think of it. Yeah, fitting them on this grid. That's all. I have not played Fit to Print, um, and I actually thought you did buy it, um, but so now I'm thinking, hmm, maybe you don't like it as much, but you have talked a lot about it, and uh, it shocked me that you liked it so much, so um, mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. Probably a little more excited for that, because I know you love it, but um, that's pretty much all the same thoughts that I had going into this. <laughs> I That one has a timed aspect to it, yeah. I think, where you're trying to pretty much eyeball how much space you have and how many things you can fit, I think. And yeah. this, does that apply? Is that contributing a lot of the fun to the game, do you think? I feel like that is a bit of the fun because you're, yeah, just the time, uh, managing all these things in a set, set amount of time because there's like little symbols on the things and stuff. That is probably a big thing about it. So I'm wondering if uh, kind of the hook to this one, this one is not timed from my understanding. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but this one's got an I cut you choose yes. uh, mechanism in it where you first kind of draft to these. I don't know exactly. Did you actually read the rule book? <laughs> yes, they do have okay. the rule book. Uh, you can find it in different links. Yep. Um, you reveal these cards. So there's one, two, three cards here equal to the number of players. And you can see all the different icons saying the tiles that go into the pool. Um, so you take all of those tiles from those three cards. And you apply a little rule on the top card that will apply during the round. And then all players draft the tiles and or specialist cards that come up until each player has six items drafted. So okay. it kind of selects a pool uh, pretty much three times uh, things. And you draft them one by one. And then from there, you get to each player gets to choose one of their drafted items that they are going to get for sure and reserve it. And then they take their remaining five and split them into two groups. So at least one item in each group, you could go one and then four in the other group. Um, any drafted face down things, you get to peek at what they are, but then you present them face down. So others don't know what they are. And then you go and you then take one group from another player's, Two groups that they've created and once everyone's done that you then get your leftover group that no one chose into your collection as well okay so. and it is that yeah I, I did not read the rules so when you're picking someone else's i guess my question was is it like determined like oh you got to pick one this round from the person to your right person to your left or no, right you choose left. anyone you, you choose want whatever 
choose yeah. anyone you want, and then they pick next uh, what they want. Oh, okay. And in a three-player game, if you just choose each other, the third person who didn't have anything chosen just gets both of their piles. So that was interesting. I'm like, <laughs> is that okay? Or is that going to feel clunky or broken in some sort? Like if it's an odd player count, is that going to occur a lot? Or I guess that mm -hmm. puts a little more weight on the initial drafting because that's what I was kind of worried about. I'm like, why are you drafting? And then it doesn't really matter because you're just going to be splitting them up and giving away half of them anyway. So, so it's, I'm uh, undecided on, I think it's all going to come down to when you play it. I have question yeah. Is that initial draft even going to feel interesting? Because you're not necessarily getting everything. Or is the <laughs> possibly not getting your things chosen, getting those things back? Is that going to be prominent? We don't play at high player counts very often. That was my worry about the game. And that's why I was going to kind of ask you if you had read the rules, kind of your thoughts on what the two to three player game would feel like, because I was wondering if that would. Uh, so in a two player game, I'm assuming you just one person picks so. the other believe... person picks. Yeah, I didn't see any two player notations uh, okay. throughout. So I assume. So that might be. Interesting, more interesting than maybe three player. I don't know. It depends how that works out. Yeah. Like you said, I it is kind of a strange thing. I wasn't really sure how it was going to feel. Uh, where yeah, you're drafting that and then having to decide. Um, I, I think it's probably going to come down to two kind of those goal cards or the whatever cards and your point oh. card or some point cards you're scoring once a game. Yeah, right? I think you have. There's four of them out there. I think they're randomized. And at the end of each round, you get to choose one to score, um, which it has some various options here. So connected groups of rectangular shapes, or some of them had to do with like, kind of four corners meeting up or completely surrounded tiles, blank spaces between tiles. Um, so those look like interesting little uh, creations that you can do. And since you see them all at the start of the game, you can kind of build out which ones you're going for um, and maybe just have kind of makes me think a little bit of cartographers where you kind of know so what's coming out um, and you can choose the order that you want to go with kind of creating some variability between players as well who has what ones left to score um, so maybe not everyone's going for the same tiles which I think helps that a little bit yeah that's true yeah this one will be this one will be interesting I'm I'm hopeful that it's going to have enough enough in there, enough enough to chew on. Uh, I think my, I don't know, not that I don't like the like polyomino style games that we have. I'm not saying this is fully a polyomino game, but um, sometimes I feel like these lighter ones, uh, or what feels like it'll be a lighter one, it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle uh, of. Oh, yeah. I'll take it out every now and then kind of thing. Um, yeah. Which is kind of, I don't know, the way I felt about Between Two Cities that Stonemaier did. Um, just kind of a little lighter, and it doesn't quite do enough for me. I'd much rather play Between Two Castles. So I guess yeah. that's a good thing if he's comparing it to that. Uh, so I'm hoping those cards are good, and I'm hoping the actual swapping I Cut You Choose does feel interesting. I'm hoping that that will work out. Uh, yeah, and maybe there'll be some mind games and stuff too. Of yeah, like you put one in there, five or four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what are you gonna pick? Why would I put one by itself? Are you gonna pick that? Uh, or are you gonna leave that to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have some face down ones in there in the five, and they think are those like negative points or something, and then they just are scared off by it, and then you get five great tiles. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I don't. It doesn't have like feeling like oh this one's gonna be different but all the ones that i do think stand out that we have played i don't know if they would have felt that way uh before i actually played them so hopefully mm -hmm. this one has something special to offer yeah that is my hope well uh because yeah otherwise yeah the that style of game just kind of like i said gets lost in the shuffle so i'm i'm hoping it'll be special yes but i'm but I'm not 100% sold right away that it's going to be uh, 
I don't know, more than like a, a filler feeling game to us. Mm, yeah. I know Jamie yeah. tends to like to put out kind of main event games. So, yeah. Yeah. So this was, uh, will be available to everyone on September 4th. Uh, yeah. That's going to be here in no time. Yeah. Uh, just a few weeks away. So it's, it's always nice about Stone Air games. You can kind of get that right away. Uh, yeah. Usually pretty soon within when they announce it. So. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess then we can go to their other news. That was just kind of the main big one. So uh, if you made it this far and aren't really interested in the rest of this, uh, like the video if you liked it. Yeah. Thumbs down if you didn't. Get subscribe out of here. either way so that you can see what's going on with us. See what crazy things we're reacting to next. <laughs> uh, but kind of going up alongside that uh, for purchase is going to be the Apiary Expansion. Uh, so that was their second game from last year. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I already got an expansion for it. So I think it was decently well received. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's going to be more stuff. Yeah, this doesn't interest me that much. I'm not a huge fan of Apiary. I just played it the once. Maybe we played it twice. I forget. But um, it, it was yeah. good. It didn't really, it didn't wow me, though. It's like, eh, it's good. It's well made, looks nice, but mm -hmm. not like driven to get back to playing it. So, uh, not essential expansion for me. Um, I don't feel like I've overplayed or outplayed the game, worn it out, uh, certainly at this point. So, uh, no, I, I, I know. I, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I feel kind of similarly. Uh, I was hoping for maybe a little bit more out of that one, but it did kind of. I don't know that. I think that's why, maybe why I'm worried about Stamp Swamp. Mm -hmm. Stamp Swamp Swap <laughs> uh, is probably just because uh, Apiary to me felt like games I'd or things that I'd felt before, and none of them really felt really unique to me. Nothing like that was like, oh, that thing is really cool in that game, and you know, it's. The main yeah, reason I want true. to get that specifically back to the table, yeah, that was it was yeah mixed for me probably a average average game, but uh, to me, Stonemaier definitely has better options in my opinion. Yeah, uh, yeah, but it's good if you like worker placement. Yeah, people placement. Yeah, first it's bees, and then now they go to the the guy who made hunters. There's something something going on here. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah, those are kind of the two big things that are available. And then uh, I think the other, what do we got there? Got some details on those leaderboards. So you can, uh, we'll put this in the link below. You can kind of go to their website and see this. Uh, and it's not, it's updated monthly. Um, uh, but then the next one, Smoking Bones Travel Guide Kickstarter. Uh, so this is related to... I don't know when they're coming out, but I believe Stonemaier is doing two or three games in this world at some point in time uh, with uh, artist Andrew Bosley, Bosley, Bosley. Uh, and yeah, I, he does. I think some of his artwork is probably some of the greatest in the industry. Uh, so uh, I'm not really that interested in this personally, but I am interested in the world eventually when we do get those games. Um, so if you're looking forward to that, you really like his artwork, uh, this might be something, you know, worth checking out, getting to know the world a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Um, who knows? Yeah. Maybe there'll be some Easter eggs in there. I have no idea. I know Let's Jamie see. loves Easter eggs. So uh, if they, <laughs> I'm sure he would allow them to uh, maybe put some things in there that might, I don't know if it necessarily spoil game, but make you kind of know what could be coming. Maybe I'm not saying for sure that's in there, but I could see it happening. This is a rule book, dang it. <laughs> uh, yeah, looking forward to those games for sure. And then we just kind of have this update, this progress uh, of all the projects here. And when they are expected, as you can see, stamp swaps coming up here, quarter four, APR expansion there. And then we still have all these code names, Crow Path. And we have Vantage, actual name of the game. Cape, Deep, Bone, Lost, Keys. They lost their keys. Ah, the Deep Bone Lost Keys. 
Yeah, I'm just thinking back to years ago, and I don't even know what it looked like and how many of those games have now been released. And I thought, oh, that's ages away. Um, now we've gotten all those games, and we have a ton more. To look yeah, for. it is. It, it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, see, I don't know when we would have started looking at this, but it might have even been maybe before Tapestry. So, uh, yeah, it would have been like almost five years ago now, right? Or it's not that long. Uh, yeah, fine. That's 2019. So, yeah. It's been, so, a while. it's been a while. So, yeah, it's been a little bit. Uh, but yeah, and then you can see the Wormspan and Wingspan expansions coming sometime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wing, oh, wingspan so far away. I want more Wingspan. <laughs> I feel like that's one that could, like, uh, who knows what uh, Elizabeth's working on, but I feel like that's something that could easily pop into 2025 if she finishes it up. Oh, yeah. Probably just depends how many other projects she's working on or if she thinks of something great for it and is able to, you know, yeah. quickly design it and stuff. Yeah. Or maybe it'll never come out again. Who knows? Maybe. maybe. They got the worm span one, so they're like, ah, we can push that back to 26. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be alive to see all these continents, Jamie. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's the big news is stamp swap, and I, for not knowing anything, I am I'm decently excited. I'm decently excited. I'm more excited about this than I think I was about Apiary, and I forget what was before that. What was right before Expeditions? Expedition. I'm more excited for this. And How about Wormspan? The earlier game this year. Wormspan. Oh, Granted, I I think that one just. I don't know that we saw that coming. That's but true. Still, yeah, Wormspan, once you heard of it. Once I heard of it, I was probably a little more excited about Wormspan um, than this. Uh, so I guess not the most exciting in, in years. It's the most exciting Stonemaier game in a half a year. <laughs> what about Rolling Rounds Redux? Okay, most exciting in, in the last week. <laughs> this has probably been a good year for well we'll see what this one ends up being uh could be a better year for us probably than maybe last year you haven't actually had a chance to try expeditions yet but that might have been just based on me uh, that's true i you, not loving it yeah you didn't love it but you love scythe i don't really love scythe um so maybe i'll love it there we go uh but yeah, that's the uh, kind of updates, what we're reacting to there. Let us know in the comments below if you're excited for Stamp Swap, if you've been waiting for the perfect stamp collecting game, if that's a theme that really gets you excited. Uh, yeah. And yeah, or if this is your favorite Stone Mario game in years, or hopefully, or what your favorite, going back, what your favorite Stone Mario game has been, or how long it's been since your favorite one, because... I think a lot of people did like Wormspan, did like Apiary, did like Expedition. So it probably isn't that long that uh, people have probably loved some games. But yeah, yeah, uh, that's all we got. Uh, if you want to see future things or actually look at past things, we did do a Stone Timber. It's been a couple of years ago now uh, for Stonemeyer's 10th anniversary. We did like a whole month of videos. So if you want to go back and look at all the Stonemeyer games as of that date, uh, which was yes. before all of the games we just mentioned. Yeah, uh, you can see our content on that. Uh, it's crazy. There's been that many since we've done that, so we got a lot more, a lot more stuff to film apparently. <laughs> but you can check out all those interesting, good, good things. Yeah. Even a top list, so then you know which games are our favorite, or were at the time. <laughs> but otherwise, we hope to see you on our next video. And as always, don't forget to keep on nibbling on our content.